Good afternoon. It's Sunday the 24th of April 2022 and today I'm in Sherwood Forest. How are we doing? So, Sherwood Forest. This is not a place that I come to very often, which is surprising really, because I don't live far away from Sherwood Forest. I think that uh, Edwin Stowe, where I've parked my car, is about 25 miles from home, so yeah, not far at all. Anyway, let's see what Sherwood Forest has to offer today. Uh, start my walk here in Edwin Stowe. Edwin Stowe takes its name from the holy shrine or resting place, Stowe of King Edwin, the Saxon king of Northumbria who was slain in 633 AD. He was buried in Sherwood Forest so that his enemies could not lay hands on his body and a small wooden chapel was later erected. Legend has it that it was here at the beautiful medieval church of St Mary that Robin married Maid Marian. The church was rebuilt in stone in 1175. Another beautiful church. I won't go in today though because there's a Sunday service on. Edwin Stowe is a lively and busy village with a variety of shops, restaurants and pubs. I walked down the High Street, which is home to a statue of Robin and Marion in their honour. After crossing the River Morn, I turned right along Mill Lane. Just before a railway bridge, I turned right onto a fieldside track, which kept more or less parallel with the River Morn. Going right at a fork, I soon crossed a wooden footbridge over the Morn to then turn left to enter the right fringe of a strand of woodland, staying close to the opposite bank of the River Morn. It's 25 past one now, even though it's still quite early in the walk. I think I'm going to need my sustenance now, so I'll try and find somewhere quiet in a minute, sit down and chomp on me sarni. After my sarni, I continued along the path until it ended at a T-junction with a wide track, next to Forge Bridge. Okay, so this is where I leave the path beside the river. And I walk up there. Ah.
Having turned right along the track, I gradually rose to pass close to the imposing archway house, built by the 4th Duke of Portland in 1842, as a replica of the gatehouse at Worksop Priory, except that the statues are of Sherwood outlaws rather than saints. Joining a tarred access road leading to the busy main A6075, I very carefully crossed over to a path opposite, where I soon started a long straight trek up a wide grassy avenue between stands of woodland. I don't know why I've visited Sherwood Forest as little as I have. But uh, to say it's not far from me. It took me less than an hour to drive from home to Edwin Stowe's. So yeah, it's uh, just not somewhere I've visited very often. So I just thought it'd be a really nice change to come here today. <laughs> Always remember when I was in my late teens. Uh, Robin of Sherwood used to be on television. <laughs> It was about 1984, 1985, and I loved that series at the time. But of course, I don't think they ever filmed it in Sherwood Forest. <laughs> Probably like a lot of Robin Hood films that I've seen, have any of them ever been filmed in Sherwood Forest? I know that Robin of Sherwood, um, the TV production company that made it, were based in the West Country, so a lot of the location scenes that were filmed in the series were actually done in the West Country. I think uh, there were other scenes that were filmed in Northumberland as well, you know, a long way from Sherwood Forest. But I think that was because they were trying to film the castles on the coastline. But yeah, I don't think Sherwood Forest, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know of any series or films about Robin Hood that have actually been filmed in the real Sherwood Forest. <laughs> The gentle climb eventually reached a large oak tree at the edge of woodland. This is the centre tree, said to mark the traditional centre of Sherwood Forest. I turned right here, passing a metal barrier, and then forked left in a hundred yards on a path signed for Budsby Reserve. I was now walking through the glorious oak and birch woodlands of Birklands, the best preserved part of the old forest, a landscape that can have changed little since the days of Robin Hood and the Sheriff of Nottingham. Whilst I think about it, there is something I must mention. If you saw my last film, I must apologise for the smudges on the picture. <laughs> I didn't realise there was a smudge on the lens when I was filming most of the last film. Um, and this goes back to what I was saying in an earlier walk last year. Um, I remember when I was talking about how I do my filming, and uh, I sort of mentioned that I used to like the old Sony camcorders because they used to have a viewfinder and when you could sort of like look through the viewfinder it was a lot clearer to see the picture that you were shooting whereas now you've only got the screen um, which is fine but it's not really clear enough so for a lot of the last walk I was shooting I didn't know there was a smudge on the bloody lens <laughs> what a nightmare oh there you go so yeah when I discovered that and when I was playing back the footage I thought oh flipping heck Hey ho, so uh, I have been cleaning the lens a lot today during this walk, <laughs> so hopefully no more smudges. 
another thing actually, because um, this camcorder I'm using now, this Sony Handycam, um, it's about it's about four and a half years old now because I I bought it yeah at the end of 2017. I think it was a Christmas present to myself, but uh, and it still works fine, but. Uh, the, the thread that screws onto the tripod, the bracket that the thread is fixed into, has now come off. The plastic that holds it on broke. So um, I've now tried super gluing the bracket back on, but that didn't work. I've just got gaffer tape now wrapped around my camera. <laughs> I'll show you a couple of uh, photos of what it looks like. It's a real flipping Heath Robinson job, I'll tell you. But uh, yeah, so all I've got now is I've wrapped gaffer tape around the camcorder and around the top of the tripod uh, because, well, I didn't know what else to do really because <laughs> I can't afford to buy a new camera, that's for sure so yeah, I'm going to make the most of this camera whilst it still keeps going for me as I say, it's still shooting pictures okay I just may have trouble with keeping it on the tripod for a while but we'll see how it goes <laughs> Keeping ahead at all junctions of paths and tracks, my way eventually led across Budby South Forest, a large area of heathland, occasionally used as the Dukery's army training area. So I'm now in Budby Reserve, or as it's marked on the OS map, Budby South Forest. This is lovely. I know, you know, the few times I have been to Sherwood Forest before, I've certainly not been to Budby Reserve, and this is really lovely. I think I just enjoy this sort of slightly more open part of the forest. Really nice. At the far side of the reserve, I approached a complex junction of paths, tracks and gateways. I've come to the end of this track now. I think this is as far north as I go on this walk. Now that I've reached this signpost, I sort of basically turn sharp right here. Go down there, slightly doubling back on myself. I'm just sort of basically heading in the direction of Edwinstow again. I think the walk's sort of getting better and better as the afternoon goes on. I followed another wide fenced track across the beautiful heathland of Budby South Forest. It's a nice gradual walk back towards Edwinstone now. It's been a lovely walk. I'm on a bit of a gradual ascent now, but there's been no climbs in today's walk really. I think this walk is about six to six and a half miles, but it's not a difficult walk by any means. Yeah, really good. Anyway, it's that time. It's time for a shout out. And I'm gonna to give today's shout out to my friend Dean. Dean and his new wife, Katie. Hi, both of you. Now, Dean and Katie, they only got married last weekend. Oh, fantastic. So congratulations, Dean and Katie. And may you have many, many years together. Happy ones, very happy ones. Um, 
I went to their wedding evening, though I didn't go to the wedding, but uh, I arrived at the venue about half past five last Saturday evening, and I was there till midnight. It was great, because uh, there were a couple of other people from work there, um, but there weren't many from work. I mean, I was one of the privileged few to have been invited. It was nice. But uh, it was a big wedding. I mean, there were lots of people there, so a lot of Dean's family and friends, uh, and obviously Katie's family and friends. So yeah, there were a lot of people there. It was nice, and uh, I know they had a lovely day. I've known Dean for a long time now. I've known him for, just trying to think, it's probably eight, nine years. Perhaps not as long as that. I can never tell with time nowadays. But I've worked with Dean now for about seven years. Uh, Dean, Dean is a giant. <laughs> He's a really tall chap. Um, but he is an absolute gentle giant. He's one of the gentlest and nicest people I've ever worked with, so. And I was really happy to see him get married last weekend. Well done, Dean. And as I say, yeah, uh, congratulations, Dean and Katie. May you have many, many happy years together. One of the reasons why I actually wanted to give the shout out to Dean and Katie whilst I'm here in Sherwood Forest is because a few years ago, Dean, for his 40th birthday celebration, or as part of it, we all went to Go Apes, which is actually at Sherwood Pines, not far from here. So, uh, yes, yeah, some of us in work went along to that, and some of Dean's friends outside of work were there, as well as Katie. That was the first time I met Katie. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we had a great time. We had an afternoon at uh, Go Ape. I've never been to one before. And I just felt like a kid all over again. It was great. Climbing up the trees and on all these sort of rope ladders and zip wires. Oh, it was just fantastic. Uh, and I know I'm not as fit as I used to be, but I would do that again like a shot. Unfortunately, COVID got in the way not long after that, but uh, it'd be really nice if we went to go ape again. I'd really be up for that. But yeah, hi Dean and Katie. And congratulations to you both. You both deserve to be really happy. I eventually walked through another metal barrier and back onto a woodlands path through Birklands. I was now following the signs for Major Oak. Certainly very distinctive. Almost doesn't look real, really. <laughs> now approaching one of the highlights of today's walk and probably the best known feature on the walk. The major oak is the biggest oak tree in Britain and is thought to be between 800 and 1000 years old. The world famous tree weighs an estimated 23 tons has a girth of 33 feet and boasts an impressive canopy that reaches a whopping 92 feet. Legend has it that the mighty oak not only provided Robin Hood with shelter, but it was also the place where he and his merry men hid and camped on their adventures.
that is one impressive tree. Very unique. Lots of people have been having their photos taken in front of it, so. Okay, well that's Major Oak. Make my way back to Edwardstone now then. Well, this has been a really nice walk. As I say, it's nice to come to Sherwood Forest for a change. I'm almost at the end now, because I'm just approaching Edwinstow. Um, it's nearly 10 to 5, so by the time I get back into the centre of Edwinstow, it'll be, what, 5 o'clock? And I started this walk about 10 past 12. So it's taken me less than five hours this time to film this walk, which is shorter than normal. I mean, to be fair, I have taken less shots this time, which is fine. But uh, hopefully I'll still manage to produce something good for all of you viewers at home to watch. <laughs> so yeah, a nice walk and thanks for coming along with me. I look forward to your company next time.